bend it with a flat tire. But she's here. She's got things going. I made it. Um, I don't know what to tell you about the music. Quite as long as normal. Um, but I think of maybe extending the sermon about another half hour. Just <laughs> Would you, anybody disagree with that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On another bright side, I'm a brand new spanking granddad to a beautiful baby boy. Excited about that. So uh, today we are in the season after the Epiphany. And we move into that time of year where we just start to read the stories of Jesus um, his, his walk from place to place, his calling of disciples, and today in particular, we have John the Baptist pointing to Jesus, Andrew going to tell his brother Peter that he has found him, come and see. And these two experiences sort of set up for us um, the, the call to be evangelists in the positive sense of that word, uh, bringing to others our experience of who Jesus is. So I would say we're turning to the hymnal in number seven, but we won't be. <laughs> Unless somebody wants to sing a cappella. Anybody want to sing a cappella? Right. <laughs> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who your word and sacraments may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hit me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel. Day. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity, yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who have formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring him, Jacob, back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord. And my God has become my strength, he says. 
It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall lay Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly my half verse. I waited patiently on the Lord. He soothed me and heard my cry. He lived He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. They shall see and sing along, and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great are your wonders and your plans for us. There is no one to be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them. But they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me years to you. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love you, will, O my God. Your mouth is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, the Lord God is great my lips, and that I will argue and know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart? I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You your love and your faithfulness be safe forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all of those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God. God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give my thanks to the God always, to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in spirit. so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord.
May the Spirit of God be in your heart and on your lips as you proclaim the good news in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he explained, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. Then they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah. He brought Simon to Jesus who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas. Praise you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Father of all, awaken in us such a love for you and your world that we may boldly proclaim Jesus Christ by word and deed that all people may come to know him and follow him to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So, enough. And I haven't even started yet. <laughs> so, you might have to think a little hard on some of this. But you know, we know you're probably not reading your Bible enough if you think that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a rock group from the 60s and had a few hits. Or you open to the Gospel of Luke. You think that Gideon is the fellow who left all those Bibles in the motel rooms. Your favorite Old Testament patriarch is Hercules. <laughs> you don't understand why Charlton Heston's name isn't listed in the table of contents of your Bible. You think the minor prophets worked in the quarries. You keep falling for it every time when the pastor tells you to turn. If you didn't find these things funny, then that's the biggest sign that you're not familiar with your Bible. The Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Scriptures. The words in this book that we call the Bible are meant to engage us in a relationship with God. They are meant to make a difference not only in our minds, but in our hearts. And with these words in our hearts, takes away the sin of the world. Or with Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, we have found the Messiah. 
come and see. The words of the Bible are not meant to stay on the pages in a book, but they are meant to be lived and proclaimed through word and example to those we meet every day. the time to teach you about what we might call good old Bible love. Someone who, because of their faith, made a difference in your life. Maybe it was your mother who sat in Simple prayers. Prayers before bedtime. Or the Lord's Prayer. Maybe it was the person who gave you your first Bible to read. Perhaps it was that one person who spent time with you when you were down and reassured you that God loves you and even if you thought nobody else did. Maybe it wasn't so much those so much through words, but through the actions and example of someone. For these people in our lives, we give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for sending them as signs of your presence. But here's another question. Who thanks God for us and our witness? To whom do we model a life in Christ? With whom do we share our convictions about God's place in our lives? Now you might be wondering, well, how in the world do I do that? Well, the answer is really simple, and this one really hits home for me right now. The answer is to act like grandparents. I'm talking about their grandchildren and great grandchildren and great great if they have any. It's a matter. Or in church, you'll see my pictures later on. And they usually have the pictures and the stories, and they do a little bit of bragging, or they do a lot of bragging about their grandchildren. And it's not just grandparents, really. When you think about it, we are all natural born storytellers, and we're always glad to tell other people about significant things that go on in our lives or significant people in our lives. Does have, uh, excuse me, it's a question. Does God have meaning in our lives? If, if yes, then how do we share that story in a way that's, that, that's, that's helpful, by the way, not, not an in your face way to turn people off? We don't really now need a course on how to testify about God's love. We don't need a Bible. Share what God has done for us. John the Baptist proclaimed the Christ, the Anointed One, to anyone who would listen, whether they wanted to hear or not. I'm not necessarily advocating that same technique today, because people might tend to avoid you if you do that. But he did it. He did it with conviction. Andrew ran to his brother Simon Peter and told him about Jesus. Come and see, he said, and look at the difference it made in both of their lives. You never know. And perhaps in someone's prayer some night, your name will be mentioned with thankfulness as one who brought them to faith, to Jesus, to a belief in God. And maybe more importantly, let the actions of our lives speak louder than words. Let the way we live and love and care speak for us. There's a quote that's attributed to use words. So let me end with this story. It was talked about in the news after the September 11th attacks. It appeared in the October 31st, 2001 edition of USA Today.
Department is a defense protection officer at the Pentagon. Officer Hoopini became known as the voice in the dark smoke moments after Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon, calling out for anyone who was in the blackened, smoke-filled corridors. If you can hear me, head toward my voice. If you can hear me, head toward my His calls to head toward his voice and were guided safely out of the burning Pentagon on September 11. Those who responded to his voice were saved. Wayne Sinclair was one of those people, one who was rescued. He found himself three weeks later lying in a hospital in Washington with second and third degree burns on his body. He remembered those words of Officer Ho Opie and made of tele I found you, Sinclair told Hobi. I found my guiding angel. We believe in one God.
that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, let's share the Lord's peace with each other. stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
right and the good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his... Thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with St. Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Christ gave his life for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep us in everlasting life. Amen.
presence. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. My body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Page 18, let us pray together. God, you have united us in Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all of your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. So we have a couple, couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, come and join us for refreshments after our service. Um, what we're going to start doing on Sundays when no one has signed up uh, to provide food for our refreshments, uh, we're going to go back to the you know coffee and and uh, cookies and that, that kind of thing to make it easy. But you're still welcome to sign up on any given Sunday if you wish to. Um, also, it's time for us to put Christmas away. So I went around to call the wreath down today and the Advent wreath, etc. They're all over there um, and they need to be packed up um, and, and put away. So any help? sure that you're all aware of the fact that our annual meeting of the congregation will be two weeks from today on January 29th following our uh, 10 o'clock service. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Now let us go out into the world to love and serve our Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.